Okay, um, I'm the last born of five children. One is now deceased. Of course, a Muslim family, coming from a Muslim family. My father was a Hajj. And uh, being in that sort of setting with music was, a <laughs> was kind of a no, not accepted. I mean, it, it had to be about books and books and that's it. So in this case, I was the, of course, I was the last born. I looked up to my elders. They loved music a lot. I mean, they were good at what they did. So I thought, I mean, let them do the music. I'll just look on. Maybe I'll go and work in a bank or something of that sort. But as I grew, things started to change. At one point, I got bored with life and I wanted to do something different with life. I think that was the time, 2008, I was there. I mean, I, I had a child by then. I mean, of, of, of the five children, I was, the last, I, was, I was the last born, but then the first person to have a child. <laughs> I think I was a bit adventurous, but I think there's something that was kind of, uh, it was kind of driving me to another path. I didn't know that music was going to kind of let itself out, and uh, I didn't know that I was going to be on the platform. I didn't know I was going to be a part of Tasca Project fame, because that was like my breakthrough time. I was so used to singing and... Uh, I mean, under closed doors, my family as the audience. I didn't have the, I was so afraid of being in the crowd. So when Tasca Project fame came, I, I kind of thought, I mean, why not? I mean, this is the time I'm so bored. I have a one year old by then. So I felt it was time I, I did something with my life, something different, not the usual, going to work and going to school. Of course, I was still pursuing school, but then music made way because nobody in my family was doing music like I thought they would. So I started doing music and mom was always supportive, God rest her soul. She was always supportive, uh, like, go for it, it's okay, we'll be behind you, whatever hurdles you face, we'll be there. My mother was my biggest cheerleader. We lost her this year, May, May 20, 25th, yeah. It was the most difficult time, because she was, uh, she was, uh, she was a strong foundation in our family because we had lost our father years and years ago. But she stayed firm and she was kind of taking two roles at the same time. Being a father at the same time, a mother, and then a friend. Ah, that's going to be get me teary. Tambuza kasobonga nege nerezo kutakwa mubunya Sanji ya gadama nye Timuwe goroku wa guno mkwano guntuma Gunja gasa iera Chiba chizivu nyo okutewe rezanti na ye watyo wa ulira
You know, I usually work with beats. When it comes to music, I really want to I look around for beats. I want sounds. I play around with sounds. So when I had this beat, I was like, I think we should have a different language onto this. So the person that was managing me during that time is half Zambian, half Zimbabwean. And he told me he could call a friend up and we, how about we, we sing Zulu? And I was like, why not? And then while he was calling the, the friend up, I was busy writing, asking him. So how about if I, I sing, uh, what does Zokalami mean? And he was giving me all these ideas. And before you know it, we got in touch with Speedy and uh, um, courtesy of, 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 of the manager I had then, who was from Southern Africa. So we managed to get in touch with Speedy and uh, we went and shot. In fact, that was the song Sony kind of um, sponsored everything, the, the, the video to to its play, play whatever, um, to its um, airing out. Ah, it was so amazing working with people because when, for example, when we're doing the video, when we decided to do the video, they had their, their, the video guys had their concept. They wanted it to be like a Western kind of, you know, done. And before I'd flown there, we'd already talked with my sister and decided that song is going to be African. We're going, we, we already even written a, a concept. During that time we shot Sokalami, it's very hard for a person going to shoot video for you to accept your concept. But these guys were able to sit me down and ask me, what exactly do you want us to do? They are called Black Weather, the guys that shot it. I 
promises made they remain the same People keep asking me about the Sony management and what it has to do with me and everything. During that time I was working with uh, someone who was a friend to one of the Sony guys and he was like, how about we, we kind of uh, get into this and see what it, where it takes us. But then he also advised me not to sign that other document where they take you on. So it was more publishing and distribution. So we decided to do Sokalami with them. They footed everything with Sokalami. So like Sokalami was under Sony, just Sokalami. The rest, the, we were helping each other. For example, if I, I could, at one point I was partnering with them. Like if they have an artist, the likes of JD, I would uh, write a song for her and, you know, help each other here and there. So, so as time went on, I realized that um, I think it's it's better we were partners in this than having to take that huge, you know. But the good thing is that I wasn't signed fully with Sony. I decided to just stay on the distribution and publishing kind of part with just one song, Sokalami. And Sokalami did well because it was distributed all over Africa. Alivomo is more a godly song because no one can love you <laughs> to that perfection. You know, it's only God that can love that way. For example, when the bridge comes, and I mean, who, 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 who can be the storm? <laughs> that song was supposed to be for some artist, some other artist. We're writing, writing it for some other artist. And uh, because when we went to studio, I had a bad flu. So I sang it that way. So it came out as a demo. <laughs> We wrote the song, but I wrote that specific song with my sister. She kept throwing in what she threw, and, and I also, whatever, merged with her and we were able to come up with Ali Bomo. Bye. 
time we were teenagers there were so many things we were going through we were coming from a family that was polygamous mm, my father had more than one wife and it was hard because i mean every wife wants a certain specific attention for their children so they won't regard you as much so we kind of uh, struggled to get that love so it took a lot of um Uh, what can, I, I can't call it fights. There was a, a struggle that usually when two, when the when the parents fight, it's the children that kind of um, the, it, it gets hard on the children. So we, I, I when I when I got out, I I wanted to like I was looking for a father figure. I didn't know I was looking for a father figure. I thought I was looking for a boyfriend or something of that sort. Yet I was. Yeah, deep down, I was looking for somebody that kind of uh, security and somebody that can be a father instead of a, a spouse. So for a teenage girl, I think this mostly goes out to the parents. They should, mm, even if you are separated with your wife or with your husband, at least try to be there for the children. Show them as much love as they can so that their confidence is 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 kind of um, groomed because every girl child needs the love and love starts from home charity begins at home it can't start on the streets 
I've met so many girls um, during my journey in the music industry, female artists, fellow female artists who have gone through the same thing, especially in so-called Muslim Muslim families. Not that Islam is 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 a is a is a bad religion. No, it's not. It's the people that kind of are, um, 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 are supposed to follow along with it and kind of get entangled with, with the material things and, 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 and kind of, this, what they call it, misunderstand the entire, the religion itself. It's not that every man, every Muslim man should have four <laughs> or three or, or ten women, no. Can you love two women? Can you kind of um, balance the two? Is it possible to balance love between two women? I mean, you find yourself loving one more than the other. So if you can't do that, if you can't love them, um, if you can't love both women, women equally, deep down in your heart, you'd rather stay with one. It is written in the Quran, but I don't know what what happened along the way once when we when we were reading the quran or the, the holy books that things be, started became entangled and uh, families started to separate so it's about loving one woman and being um being one with one because you can't be one with four or two it's, it's difficult you will actually love one more than the other and it will bring a, a clash children will, will struggle you find kids on the streets you find others um harassed others looking for love elsewhere in men so this goes out to the parents most especially let's read the book much more closely and and try to align things so we don't kind of fall astray yeah with false doctrines yeah
future. Just quite a lot. Let's make it last. No more quite no. I've gone through a lot of trials in this music industry, but then the major trials that I went through were breaking, it, breaking out of the music industry, a female. Um, one thing that usually was very helpful was the fact that I could write my own music because I met so many people who wanted to take advantage. And like, if they found you desperate, they would kind of uh, sway you in into a, a ditch or something of that sort. I've had people being on the negative, people saying that i um, underrated and all those kinds of things. Of course, um, it takes me back to how I started doing, how I started my music. It wasn't for, during that time, it wasn't for anyone. It was for myself to feel good. And in fact, it's that passion that keeps driving me to do music even today. Otherwise, I would have given up because there's been so much criticism. People have said so much. But then, who writes a song and it still hits the same way it did like in 10 years? So I, those are kudos on me. <laughs> to the haters, I um, mean, you're supposed to exist because you also help us in one way or another to become stronger. I'm not the same person I was before. I can stand my ground and speak my mind and be independent and know what I want. This is how I want it, things of that sort. So trials are here to shape us, mold us into better human beings. Sechemani ndi wa munawe kuno moyo gwenina seguchano nyo mulala gwenange mbanterete The story behind Terede is uh is another mellow one cuz um uh, I remember Michael Fingers by that time 2000 it was 2010 and he was like I have a couple of bits the fact that you know how to write, why don't you choose one of the bits for this song? He played the bit, and it was like kind of a happy go kind of song. And I was like, it's a chemani, di wamuna, we kuno moyo. And he said, you know, that's what we're going to record tomorrow. So I was so excited. The next morning, when we recorded just the chorus, everyone was like, this is the song. And people couldn't leave the studio. That's how it found itself. <laughs> the other story I told you about, how it took itself out of studio. And so far it has gotten itself, it has flown to Nigeria with other artists, flown to so many countries, made remixes. Yeah, yet the artist is here. <laughs> Tu 
Sanya to come over, take a moment, one of Ginio, who more Nessica, when Quesica, been a bien cucumber, Mazama, Colain, and come on, Colora, who walk for a time so long. Boy, when in the channel,
you TML for having me for this episode of Conversations. And once again, thank you Swangs Avenue Production for making me feel so at home during this episode. Thank you, thank you.